Nintendo does this to themselves. They always release this weird, crazy, innovative hardware, and the initial response is always utter confusion. Why have two screens? What do you mean it's 3D? That looks like a TV remote. Of course, in the past, this confusion stage hasn't lasted long because Nintendo always shows us. They always prove the hardware with great software. We still haven't gotten to that point with the Wii U. At least, not yet. Not fully. Nintendo Land came close, but we need more. We need a series that's custom-made for really weird controllers. A series that thrives on creativity. A series that's proven weird hardware in the past. We need WarioWare, you might say, but there's just one problem. Game & Wario is not WarioWare. <laughs> Believe me, this game may look like WarioWare, it even sounds like WarioWare, but it's only a disguise. I mean, there's a yellow biker helmet, but it's a cheap one. There's a denim vest, but it doesn't have the same lovable stench. See, Game & Wario is not the celebration of outright chaos you might expect. It's just a minigame collection. And more specifically, it's a minigame collection with more problems than minigames. Game & Wario is a collection of 12 minigames and 4 multiplayer games. And the term minigames is important, because this is not about micro games. See, WarioWare games normally hit you with one micro game after another, none lasting longer than a few seconds, each one more creative and bizarre than the last, each one fun. All too often, Game & Wario is none of those things, and most disappointing of all, it's not the proof of concept the Wii U needs. It's, it's kind of unfair, because it's really a product of expectation. The Wii's WarioWare game was bursting with ideas for the Wii Remote, stuff you never would have imagined. In this case, Nintendo didn't seem to imagine them either. This isn't really a bad game per se, but of its 16 games, only a handful come close to that WarioWare brilliance. And the troublesome part is, some are rehashing old ideas on a system that's not even a year old. <laughs> So, what works? Well, there's Patchwork. This is a simple puzzle game that has you moving patches with the stylus to solve pixelated puzzles. It's a lot of fun, and it, it's also addictive enough that you'll definitely want to come back to it. There's also Pirates, which is this insane rhythm game that has you blocking pirate attacks by moving the gamepad. Not only is it fun to play, but it's, it's equally fun for spectators who are gonna laugh at you. But by far, the best of the bunch is Gamer. It's the most fun, it's definitely one of the coolest examples of asymmetrical gameplay to date, and fittingly, it's the only game that uses micro games. So it's basically WarioWare, as usual, but with an awesome catch. You're supposed to be in bed, and if your mom catches you... So you're playing micro games on the gamepad, but you also have to listen for your mom on the TV. Footsteps, doorknobs, things like that. So you have to pay attention to two screens at once. And that's a brilliant example of what Wii U is all about. But it's, it's like one of the only ones here. It ends up feeling like a teaser for something that never comes. But fortunately, things pick up a bit with the multiplayer games. One in particular is just awesome even though it's, it's basically just Pictionary for the Wii U. So one player has to draw pictures on the gamepad, and the others have to guess. It's so simple, but it's a real highlight of Game & Wario. And that's a great taste of Wii U as well. To have people playing with no controllers necessary, that's such a great idea. And that's where we are with Wii U. Lots of great ideas, but no great moment, no epiphany. 
unfortunately, it's it's not coming from Wario. To be fair, you can't exactly toss around the gamepad like the Wii Remote. You know, there there are reasons this game is what it is, but that that's the part that worries me. If Wario doesn't have any better ideas, who does?